Good morning. My name is Debbie, and I'm a volunteer with the Mount Lebanon Green Team. Any questions you have related to this presentation on rain gardens can be directed to lebogreen2020 at gmail.com. Rain gardens are a beautiful and efficient way of slowing and reducing stormwater runoff into municipal water systems and can help you manage rainwater on your property. In addition, they create backyard habitat for native plants, insects, and animal species. Here in the South Hills, where level ground is hard to come by, heavy rain events most likely will result in water flowing through your yard, as well as off your roof, driveway, and sidewalks. So what exactly is a rain garden? Simply put, a rain garden is a depression in the ground situated so that it collects rainwater runoff and allows it to soak into the ground before it gets into the stormwater system. It not only slows and absorbs runoff, but will help to filter out pollutants from the runoff as the water percolates into the soil. The plants in the garden help with water absorption and secure the soil in the rain garden to prevent erosion. If you are wondering if this is an option for you, ask yourself these questions. Do you have impervious surfaces, such as rooftops, walkways, or driveways? Do you have existing downspouts running into your lawn or out to the street? Is there soil erosion on your property? Does water run down your slope to flood your patio, your basement, or the street? Would you like to use rainwater as an overflow, a rain garden as an overflow for your rain barrels? If you answered yes to any of these, then consider a rain garden. Here in this picture, it's a rain garden that is situated in between the main high school building and the sports complex. It is there to collect water and it's permeable pavement around it that will also let water um, travel through it into the ground. So thought and planning need to go into the development of a rain garden, both regarding location and size. You can tie in other forms of water retention to the rain garden. For example, depending on where your rain barrel is located, you can connect the overflow from a rain barrel to your rain garden or run vegetated swells from steeply sloped areas of your yard to your rain garden. You can also redirect your downspout to your rain garden. There are many resources that are available in the Pittsburgh area that you can contact for assistance. The links for these organizations are listed at the end of the presentation. Installing a rain garden requires digging, not terribly deep, but always remember when digging to contact PA1 call or call 811 in PA. Homeowners and contractors must call 811 at least three business days before starting any digging or excavation project as required by law so that location of utility lines can be marked. Locate your garden in a spot which will provide it with the most rainfall possible based on where you see water flow during heavy rain events. Remember to leave at least 10 feet between the garden and your foundation. Most soils are categorized as sandy, silty, or clayey. Sandy soil will feel gritty and coarse, and it drains the fastest. Clayey soil, which is sticky and clumpy, will drain the slowest. In Western PA, most of the soils have high clay content. Rain gardens can still work in clayey soil, but they will need to be larger. Perform a percolation test to see how quickly water will drain from your chosen location. To do so, dig a 12-inch hole where you're considering putting your rain garden and fill the hole with water. Let it drain. Fill it again. Sandy soil will drain completely within two hours and silty can take up to six. Clay soil may take up to 12 hours to drain. If the water's still there 12 hours after or later, you may need to augment your soil or look for another place to dig. Mixing sand and compost into existing soil will increase porosity and improve drainage. Do not locate your garden under an existing tree as digging as deep as is required may damage existing roots and the extra moisture, depending on the tree species, may damage uh, the tree and shorten its life. So how do you determine your garden size? Size your garden according to the lawn area, paving area, roof area, number of dot spots, number of rain barrels, etc., which will be draining into it. The Three Rivers Rain Garden Alliance has an online rain garden calculator that you might find useful in determining the size of your garden. It assumes that you will be capturing water from the roof via a downspout. Decide on the shape of your garden and mark it on the lawn with a rope or garden hose. A good rule of thumb is to make the length about twice the width. The wider side should face uphill so it can catch as much water as possible. 
Most gardens are between four to eight inches deep. Shallower than four will require a larger garden or not be able to handle the water flow. Deeper than eight will take too long to drain. Water should percolate within 24 hours maximum. I'll see the diagram on the screen. The bottom of the garden should be fairly level to allow the water to spread out for, for a wider absorption area. If the yard is less than a 4% slope, it is easiest to build a four inch deep garden. If the yard is between five and 7% slope, it's easiest to build a six, a six inch deep garden. And if it's between eight and 12%, it's easiest to build an eight inch deep garden. Greater than 12%, it's not recommended that you put in a rain garden. There you might be, want to look at putting in a swell. If working on a slope, use the soil you are digging out from the uphill side of the garden to create a berm on the lower side. This will reduce the amount of digging you need to do. Give the berm gently sloping sides and compact the dirt so it won't erode. Plant grasses or flowers on the berm to help hold it in place. As you create your berm, create a designated outlet to accompany storm to accommodate storms that may exceed the capacity of the rain garden. Storms that exceed the capacity of the garden must have an outlet so that it does not damage the berm. This also allows you to plan on where that outlet will be directed so that it doesn't um, lead it directly to your foundation or elsewhere where you don't want the water going. The outlet should be two inches lower than the top of the berm. Line the outlet with rocks or gravel to prevent erosion. This should not happen often, but it is good to be prepared for extreme, extreme rain events. Once the garden is dug to the proper depth and leveled, begin to loosen the soil to prepare for planting. If your location contains poor soil or high amounts of clay, this is the appropriate time to make soil amendments. Tilling sand and compost into the, excuse me, into the existing soil will increase porosity and improve drainage. So rain gardens are usually planted with native drought tolerant perennial species, which can flourish in wet or dry conditions. These plants typically have deep root systems and once established can reach water even in dry summer months, providing additional avenues for water to travel deeper into the ground. These species do the best job of absorbing and filtering stormwater and are very low maintenance. In addition, they need little to no fertilizers or chemicals. Rain gardens are designed to be wet for fewer than 24 hours after a rain, not long enough for mosquito larva to mature. Established rain gardens can endure long periods of dry conditions. The best rain gardens are not, rain garden plants are not wetland plants, but plants that can tolerate wet soil for short periods and thrive in dry summers as well. Sedges, Joe pieweed, and swamp milkweed are all excellent examples. When planting your garden, it helps to draw a design and map out where you want to position specific plants. It will make the actual planting much easier. Plants that thrive in very wet conditions should be placed in the lowest part of the garden. Plants that thrive in drier soil should be work up the edges of the garden. Plant it fuller than a perennial garden so it fills in quickly. A full planting mimics nature better and reduces the space for weeds to invade. Using sedges, rushes, and grasses helps to eliminate weeds, encourages other plants to stay within bounds, adds diversity, and adds a thick root system that balances the garden and prevents erosion. It is best to plant in the spring or the fall to take advantage of the greater amount of rain, which helps the plants get established. Check with local organizations for workshops on installing rain gardens and take advantage of the extensive amount of information about rain gardens and what to plant from these same organizations. Spreading a layer of shredded hardwood mulch after planting helps retain moisture, regulate soil temperature, and serves as a weed barrier. Do not use large size mulch chips. They will float and wash away. This is the rain garden next to the bathrooms at Main Park, designed by Stormworks and maintained by the Mount Lebanon Green Team. And here is the original design for the Main Park rain garden. Some modifications and plantings were made due to plant availability at the time, but it gives you an idea of uh, what went into it. Maintain your rain garden just as you would any other garden. Watering is necessary through the first two seasons to help plants establish. Refrain from using chemicals, herbicides, or insecticides as these work against the purpose of a rain garden and are pollutants. 
lightly mulch until the garden becomes too full to need mulching. After heavy downpours, check for signs of erosion. Add more plants, river rocks, or mulch to address these concerns. Move plants around if you think they would do better in drier or wetter parts of the garden. Your rain garden will help you create more biodiversity in your yard, which is the best way you can help our declining bird and insect populations. Lastly, you can register your rain garden with the Three Rivers Rain Garden Alliance, and they will track the amount of rainwater you are collecting. Thank you for listening, and remember, Earth Day is every day.